Hi guys, I'm Gabby Wallace and this is a Go Natural English lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to improve your listening and your speaking skills. I want to reveal a secret sound that we have in English that you would never know about by just looking at the way we spell words. So this is really going to help your pronunciation and also your comprehension of the sounds that you hear people making or the words that you hear people saying. All right, so this is a sound that comes from our stress patterns in English. Every English word that has more than two syllables or two syllables or more is going to have a strong or a stressed syllable and a weak or an unstressed syllable. All right, so the strong syllable is really a bully and kind of punches the weak syllable in the stomach and it makes a sound that sounds like this. Uh, uh, just like getting punched in the stomach. Hey, that's how I remember this sound. It's called schwa, but the name of the sound doesn't really matter. What matters is that you understand that English has this sound on unstressed syllables and it's caused by the fact that the stressed syllable is so strong that it makes the unstressed syllable sound weak and gives the sound uh. So let's take a look at some examples. I can show you how each of the vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, U, becomes transformed into uh when you, found, when you find these vowels in weak syllables. Let's do it. I've circled the weak syllable. I've underlined the strong syllable. So listen to the word again. Hmm, it's not a gain, it's again. All right, next, vitamin, vitamin. All right, so you can hear the uh there and the uh there. Next, events, events, uh, vent, not event, event. Celebrate, it's not celebrate, it's cele. Uh, right? Uh, uh. <laughs> Braids. This sound is kind of similar to getting punched in the stomach, but it's also kind of similar to that noise that some people make when they're not sure what to say. Uh. Mm hmm. Okay. So let's look at the I words, the I vowel here. President. President. So it's not president or president, it's president. Okay, and experiment, kind of similar to president, experiment. The circled syllables are much shorter also than a stressed syllable. So that's how we have this small sound, uh. These syllables are shortened, and if you can produce this sound, it's really going to help your pronunciation and your flow because we have to shorten the syllable. I, I can't say president and speak in a natural way. The natural flow of English requires you to make a strong syllable and a weak syllable. President. All right. Next, official. It's not official, it's official, official. Condition, similarly, we start with an uh sound, condition. And, oh, I also circled over here because it also sounds like an uh sound, condition. Hmm. Great, and last we have the U sound, which is really similar to the schwa sound anyway, but here we go, camp, us. Campus, like your college campus. It's not campus, it's campus. And last we have support. Support. In this English tip, I'm going to answer a great question from Hafiz. Hafiz, you're an awesome member of the Go Natural English community online, and you asked about how to link words together. That, my friend, is a huge secret to be able to understand American English and to speak more like a native. So I want to share some examples and some answers with you. Now, this English tip is also brought to you by the Go Natural English Fluent in 15 course.
course. Inside the course, you're going to learn more about topics like this one, like how to link words together to understand American English and to speak more like a native. The course is based entirely on real, spontaneous American English conversations. So you learn subconsciously without really trying and it's a lot of fun. We have a great community and we support each other. There's a great conversation going on every day. People are talking back and forth in our online group. So when I say talking, I mean a lot of chatting, texting, and some people are getting together online to practice together one-on-one. -on -one. Anyway, I wanna share this answer with you about how to link words. Now, it's difficult to give you steadfast rules that hold true for every situation. That's just not really how English works. It's not black and white, and people speak differently. So when some people might link words together, other people will not. Also, if you're in a more formal situation, people tend not to link words together or reduce them. If you're in a more informal or casual situation, people definitely speak in a more relaxed way. They will link and reduce words together. Now, I was thinking about how to give you some advice and some answers about your question, and the song came to mind. I wanna dance with somebody. All right, so that is a great song from the 80s. I wanna feel the heat with somebody. Okay, so the lesson here is not that I'm a great singer or that I'm a great dancer. I know you were thinking that, thank you. But the lesson is that want to reduces into one word, wanna. So oftentimes you will hear wanna. I want to dance, I want to do something. So almost always those two words reduce into wanna, which sounds like one word, but it's not. It's two that reduce and link together. Reduce is when two words will lose sounds and come together. Want to. Want ends in a T, two begins in a T. So the T's just blend together. We don't hear them. We don't hear want two, we hear wanna, the T's disappear. Crazy, huh? Okay, here are three other examples that are really common. How are you? I rarely hear people say this question in this way, unless they're being really dramatic or they want to be overly clear. We say, how are you? So how and are kind of blend together, they link together, we say, how are you? So part of this is that the verb are is not stressed. It could be, right? As I mentioned before, people speak differently. Some people may want to emphasize the verb. How are you? It's a very common way that you might hear this question. Now it's your choice how you ask this question, but a lot of people will say, how are you? And you might miss that they're asking, how are you? Next example, are you busy? We could link together the words, are you? Are you busy? So you is not really stressed. So we lose the full word. Are you busy? Next, what are you doing? We can link these sounds together. What you doing? Wow, that's really casual, what you doing? But you'll hear people linking together the words, what are you, into whatcha, what you doing? So let me hear you say these phrases. The first one, how are you? Good, next, are you busy? Good, what you doing? Good, okay, excellent. So as I said, there's a lot more phrases than these where we'll find reduced sounds and words linking together, but I only have time to share three with you right now. So if you're interested in learning more, come on over to gonaturalenglish.com slash fluent15, that's F-L-U-E-N-T-1-5. I have a great question from a member of the Go Natural English audience, Ali Mahmoud, asks, how do you say words that have R-T-H, like 
W-O-R-T-H, N-O-R-T-H, B-I-R-T-H. Ali, great question. These words are not so easy, especially if you're coming from a traditional English classroom where you learn how to read before you learn how to speak. These words are really important to learn through your ears. Learn them with the sounds, not by the way you read them. There are a lot of words in English that have R, T, H letter combinations. Of course, I can't teach all of those words in one episode because it would be way too long, but I do teach them in the Go Natural English Premium course. I teach a lot of pronunciation in that course, and you can find out if the premium course is right for you at gonaturalenglish.com. I hope you'll join and learn more. Now, the RTH combination is it's really important to understand that um, the vowel that comes before the R is really important. You'll, al you'll always have a vowel there. So you have to include the vowel sound with the RTH. But actually, the good news is it's always the same vowel sound regardless of the spelling. So I think the mistake, the problem that a lot of English learners have is that you want to read the vowel in the way that you learn it in the alphabet. Like, O should be O, right? So with the word W-O-R-T-H, you're thinking worth, which is incorrect. With the word N-O-R-T-H, you're thinking north, which is correct. Uh, with B-I-R-T-H, you're thinking beerth, which is incorrect. Um, now, most words that have R-T-H, are, ha they have what you call an R-colored vowel, which means the vowel just sounds like eh. So, er, when combined with R, earth. So, like, worth, W-O-R-T-H is worth. North is an exception. Birth is the same Er. So even though worth and birth have completely different vowels, O and I, they have the same vowel sound. Worth, birth, and north, which is a nice exception. English is full of exceptions. Don't you love it? So if you'd like to learn more about pronunciation, remember that you can try the premium course at gonaturalenglish.com. I'd love for you to join. I really break down how to create those sounds using your mouth and exactly what you should be doing with your teeth, tongue, lips, like pronunciation is all about how you move your mouth. So it's really important to understand the mechanics. So for this episode, that is all. I want you to practice repeating those three words, worth, birth, and north. Hey there, my amazing English learner. How are you today? I hope you're doing awesome. Now, I know that you are curious about English pronunciation. And if you're here, it's because you probably want to learn North American English pronunciation with me, Gabby, your English teacher. I am from the United States and I'm a native North American English speaker with kind of a standard American dialect. But there are a lot of words out there that might be confusing. Maybe you don't know what is the right, correct, proper way to pronounce them. And did you know that there are some words that native English speakers don't even agree on how to pronounce? That's right, because North America is very big. And when you consider there are different regional dialects or accents even within the United States, we have several words that can be pronounced both a one of two ways. Either way is correct. So in this English video lesson, I'm gonna share 11 words that can be pronounced two different ways and both ways are correct. So if you're curious about what these words are and how to pronounce them properly, then keep watching.
Hey, just before we dive into the lesson, I want you to know you can get my best free English video lessons directly in your email inbox. If you'd like that, simply join my free email group by clicking on the link in the description or in the card right up there. I hope to see you inside the group. Now, let's begin with our lesson. The first word that can be pronounced one of two different ways, both correctly, is something that I like to put on my sandwiches. And in fact, I also like to put this condiment on my French fries. It is mayonnaise. Or, as some people say, mayonnaise. Both are correct. Next, we have a delicious sweet. It's a bit chewy, but it's very good. Caramel. You might see caramel apples, especially in the fall. They're very popular. But some people say caramel. Both are correct. Now, when I was a kid, I loved doing artwork. I loved drawing. And most of the time, as most children do, I made my drawings with crayons. Crayons, but some people say crayons, and both ways are correct. Now today, you might notice my beautiful earrings, which are in the category of jewelry. I say jewelry, some people say jewelry. That's a big difference, a couple additional syllables. Jewelry or jewelry. If you want to buy a house or sell a house, you probably want to get the help of a realtor, or some people would call a realtor. Both are correct, and they're the same word with the same meaning. In fact, if you want to help people to buy and sell houses, you might become a realtor. Next, if you do buy that house, you're going to need home insurance. Insurance, or some people say insurance. It's just a different way of stressing the stressed syllable. It's just a different syllable that's stressed depending on where people are from in the United States. So I say insurance, but some of my friends say insurance. Next, one of my favorite snack foods is a nut, a very healthy nut called an almond. I actually say the L usually, slightly almond, but most people would say almond, almond with no L sound. Did you know that I'm an only child? That means I don't have any sisters or brothers. And that means that I won't be officially an aunt or an aunt. Both are the same. Some people say aunt, some people say aunt. However, ants can also be the name of a little insect but both are correct, aunt or aunt. But I will be an aunt when my friends have children. I'll be an unofficial auntie. Next, if you want to describe someone who is getting into minor trouble, maybe playing jokes or always laughing, always planning some kind of funny thing, you could describe them as mischievous. Some people say mischievous, other people say mischievous. Online, you've probably seen this thing that is like a mix between an image and a video, and it's called a GIF. So officially, correctly, it is called GIF. However, a lot of people call it a GIF. So you have to decide what you're gonna do here. And our final word is a type of sandwich. I love getting this kind of sandwich from food carts in New York City. It's very popular there. And there's a couple different ways that people say this kind of sandwich. And I just never know which way is really correct. So we could call it a gyro or a hero. Or even another way, I think some people would call it a gyro, but I'm pretty sure that's definitely not correct. English learners, you know that the regular past tense is formed with an ED ending, right? But what about when you actually pronounce the past tense? Does it always sound like ED? Is it, I called you yesterday? Is it, 
I watched Netflix last night? Is it I talked for an hour with my friend yesterday? I don't think so, but this is a mistake that many of you English learners are making. So today I want to talk about this to solve this confusion once and for all and to help you with your English pronunciation. Now, if you are learning English, I highly suggest that you join the waitlist for my complete English course at gonaturalenglish.com slash pre-reg. And that's where I'll share more information about how my course can benefit you to speak English fluently and confidently. Now let's jump into this lesson. I'm going to explain the three rules of pronunciation for the regular past tense in English. I'm going to share lots of real life examples that you can actually use. They'll be practical, not only examples about pronunciation, but really good examples that you can use in your conversations and a quiz to test your understanding at the end. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are three rules for pronunciation of the past tense. We have, as you can guess, the ed ending, which is how you would imagine ed to sound. We have to remember that in English, sometimes the way we spell words is not indicative of the way it sounds. In other words, the way we spell a word is completely different from the way we say it. And that's what can make this confusing. So step one is Remember that the sound can be different from the spelling. What you hear in English can be completely different than what you see. So for today, close your eyes. Don't think about what you read on paper or in your textbook and open your ears to the sounds of the past tense in English. So the first sound is ed, ed. The second sound is also spelled ed, but it is pronounced d. It's not a whole nother syllable like ed, it's d. I'll show you some examples in just a minute. And the third sound is t, like a t sound, but the past tense is still spelled with an ed. Now I'm talking about the regular past tense here. Of course, you probably know there are lots of irregular verbs in English. What a joy, but we're not talking about those today. We're just talking about regular verbs. So let's start with what you're probably most familiar with is the ed sound. This is the sound that we use when a verb ends in T or D. So we're always going to be thinking about the base verb. For example, want, I want. So this verb ends in what letter? Can you tell me? T, right. So the past tense of want, of course, is spelled with ED on the end and is pronounced wanted. We have that ed sound, which you imagine we would have based on the spelling. Let's think about another verb that ends in D. How about the verb end? It ends in D. And when we make it in the past tense, we add ED and it sounds like ended. So we have that ed ending. Let me share some full sentences with you so that you can get more practical examples. I wanted a new challenge. As I say these examples, I highly encourage you to repeat them after me because this will help you with your pronunciation and to remember how to pronounce these verbs in the past tense. When you actually practice, when you actually say them out loud, it will help you to remember more than if you simply listen to me. So you could listen to this lesson once and then the second time you watch this lesson, try repeating after me. Very good. So our first example was, I wanted a new challenge. Now, let me add a little bonus information here. You might have just noticed that when I make the past tense with want, you barely hear that T, right? I wanted a new challenge. I don't say I wanted a new challenge. This is another mistake that English learners often make. Now, 
In North American English pronunciation, we often delete the T sound or mute the T sound when it comes between an N and a vowel. So because want is spelled W-A-N-T, and then we have the ed ending, it sounds like wanted. It almost sounds like there's no T there at all. So if you'd like to sound more like a native English speaker, remember you can mute that T. Now it's not a huge deal. People will still understand you if you say wanted. And in other regional dialects and other countries, you will hear people say wanted. But if you'd like to sound more like an American English speaker, you can say wanted. I wanted a new challenge. Very good. Next example. I ended my contract. Land. I landed a new job. Now, in this example, landed means I received or I got a new job. I landed a new job. Debate. I debated which job I should accept. Negotiate. Now, remember that the spelling of negotiate ends with an E. But we don't base our pronunciation on spelling. We base our pronunciation on sounds. So negotiate ends in a T sound, not in an E sound. We don't say negotiate T. We say negotiate T. So that past tense is negotiated. I negotiated a higher salary. Now hold up, hang on, wait a minute. Why don't you hear that t sound in negotiate when I make the past tense? Well, it sounds like negotiate dead. It sounds like a D. That's because, again, North American English speakers love to change T's. So that T sound is between two vowel sounds and therefore it sounds like a D. I negotiated a higher salary. Accept. I accepted the job that would challenge me the most. Taste. Victory. Tasted. Great. Can you think of any other verbs that end in T or D that would take this ed sound at the end? Write them in the comments and let's share more examples. Write a full sentence if you're up for the challenge. The next category of past tense pronunciation is the T sound. The past tense sounds like T when the base verb ends in P, F, S, K, S, H, or sh, CH, or ch, or TCH, also ch, and TH, or th. These are called voiceless sounds, which means that when you make the sounds, you don't use your vocal cords. And those are the sounds that get after. Let's look at some examples. Back or to back out. I backed out of a bad deal. Kick. I kicked a bad habit. So to kick a bad habit means that you stopped doing something bad for you. I kicked a bad habit. Talk. I talked with my boss. Push. I pushed for a raise. Wash. I wash my hands of gossip. To wash your hands of something is to avoid it or to stop doing it or say, no, I will not get involved in this. I washed my hands of the gossip. Watch. I watched for a new opportunity. Search. I searched for information. Like. I liked what I saw. Stop. I stopped complaining. Laugh. I laughed about it. Hope. I hoped everything would go well. Can you think of more examples with verbs that end in unvoiced sounds like P, F, S, K, S, H, C, H, T, H, or T-C-H? Write them in the comments and let's share more examples together. The third rule of how to pronounce the past tense in English is really good for all the rest of the verbs. This is where we get the D sound and this applies to verbs that end in B, V, 
G or a J sound. Z, J, TH as a voice sound like V, L, M, N, R, W, and vowel sounds like Y. Let's look at some examples. Average. Again, this verb ends in E, but the sound it ends in is J, like a G. We don't say average we say average. So if I make this a past tense verb, I would say I averaged. I averaged three interviews a week. Smile and hear. I smiled when I heard the news. Confirm. I confirmed I would accept the job. Call. I called my parents and told them the news. Spaz out. To spaz out means to become very excited. They spazzed out when they heard the news. To man up. Sorry guys, this is the only verb I could think of that ends in N. Maybe you can help me think of more examples in the comments. So to man up means to be brave, but I don't really like this example very much because it's a bit sexist, but here we go just for the sake of practicing our past tense pronunciation. They said, you finally manned up and got a job. Summarize. I summarized the job interview and the offer. Play. I played my favorite song. Allow. I allowed myself to take a day off to celebrate. Nab. To nab means to get or acquire. I nabbed a great job. Save. I saved the best for last. Judge. My new company told me they judged all the applications and mine was the best. Tithe. To tithe means to give a percent of your income to charity. People often tithe by giving money to a church or a religious institution or a nonprofit. With my new salary, I tithed 10% of my income. So these were all examples with the d sound. Can you think of any more examples? Maybe verbs that end in the th voice sound, v, like tithe, or that end in b, v, z, j, or j, like a d, g sound, like judge, l, m, n, r, w, or vowels like y? We'll share them in the comments so that we can all learn more together. Now it's time for a quiz to test your understanding of the past tense pronunciation. So which past tense pronunciation would you use for each of these questions? The ed, t, or d sound. You tell me. One, I schedule your appointments for Wednesday. If you said, D, I scheduled your appointment, you're correct. Two, I Google the address. In the past tense, this would be D, I Googled the address. Three, he walk his dog earlier this morning. In the past tense, this would be T, he walked his dog earlier this morning. Four, when she tasted the coffee, she said it was good. If you said, Ed, you're correct. When she tasted the coffee, she said it was good. Five, he applauded your work. If you said, Ed, he applauded your work, you're right. And six, they cap entry at 100 people. If you said, T, you're correct. They capped entry at 100 people. To cap means to limit. So when I say they capped entry, that means that they limited the number of people who could enter an event. Very good. How did you do on the quiz? And how are you feeling about your past tense pronunciation? I would love to know if any of this is still confusing and we can continue working on it together. Thank you so much for learning English and practicing together with me and with Go Natural English. Again, I highly recommend that if you'd like to learn in a structured format and get my help and feedback on your English skills, that you join the waitlist for the complete Go Natural English course at gonaturalenglish.com slash pre-reg. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet here to Go Natural English on YouTube, please hit that big red subscribe button so you don't miss another awesome free English lesson here. Thanks so much for watching. Have an excellent day. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you again here soon. English is full of difficult sounds. Am I right? But some sounds might be difficult for you, but easy for other English learners. Why is this? Why is it difficult for my Brazilian English students to pronounce the R and the H sounds? Why is it difficult for my Asian English learners to pronounce the R versus the L? And for my Arabic speakers, the P and the B are a big challenge. Well, this all relates to your native language, your mother tongue, the sounds that you grew up with. But there are five sounds that across the board for every English learner are challenging. And I know this because I've been teaching for about 15 years and I've taught students from all over the world, from over 134 different countries. So I have heard a lot of different challenges in English pronunciation and I help you to improve them. Let me share something that's really important before we talk about the most difficult five sounds. A sound is not a letter. When you think about the way that words are written, you think of the letters you use to spell them. But a letter is not a sound. A sound is not a letter. It could be, but it is not always this way. One letter for one sound. For example, TH, two letters make one sound, either V or so this is a sound, a phoneme. It is represented by two letters. Other sounds could be represented by two letters as well, like k could be c, k. But other sounds could be just one letter, like l for love is an l, and so on. So I want us to be really clear that a sound is not always just one letter. And that's really where we have to begin to open our minds to think about sounds as just sounds and not the same as the way we spell the words, because this is where we have those difficulties. I mentioned my Brazilian students struggle with the H and the R and Asian students struggle with R and L, Arabic speakers with P and B. And this is because of the way you think of the words spelled on paper in English. Because in your language, if you saw these letters, you would pronounce them with a different sound. So you are transposing the rules of your native language onto English. And we can't do that because the rules of English are different than the rules in your native language. Sounds can be represented by letters. Letters can represent sounds, but they are not always equal. Are we good? Are you together with me? Give me a yes in the comments if we can go ahead. First of all, a lot of English teachers and a lot of English learners think that it is essential to have perfect pronunciation in order to communicate. And this causes a lot of stress because it can take years or perhaps even a lifetime to get that perfect native like pronunciation. It may honestly never happen, especially if you have learned English later on in life. You could develop a perfect native accent, but you might not. And that's okay because I'm here to tell you that communication and clear communication, expressing yourself and being understood is not dependent on whether you can pronounce these five sounds correctly or really any sound correctly. Honestly, it is not essential to have perfect pronunciation. For example, if, an English learner says t instead of the. It's a common mistake or pronunciation with an accent for an English learner. I will still understand you if you say tanks teacher and not thanks teacher. I will still get it. No, it's not 
perfect, it's not native-like, but you're still communicating. I understand that you wanted to say, thanks, teacher. I know what you mean from the context. Even if you say something like turd instead of third, well, other people might giggle and laugh a little bit, but we will still understand what you mean to say from the context. For example, the third place I lived was Boston. If you said the third place I lived was Boston, it might make me laugh a little bit, but I still understand what you meant to say. You were communicating successfully even without the perfect third pronunciation. So perfect pronunciation of every single sound in English is not necessary for communication. However, Perfecting your pronunciation can really help to communicate faster, to help your listener by reducing the cognitive load, by helping them to understand you faster, especially if you're speaking with someone who is not used to hearing someone with your accent. There are a lot of people, a lot of English speakers who have not ever spoken with someone who speaks English as a second language. Now, if you speak to me, your English teacher, I will probably understand you because I'm so used to hearing a variety of accents. But if you go to a small town in the middle of America and you meet someone who has never left their town or never interacted with someone from another country who speaks another language, they might have more difficulty understanding you. So of course, it's a good idea to try to speak with a more correct or native-like pronunciation. What I'm saying is that you don't need perfect pronunciation in order to start communicating. I don't want that to stop you or make you hesitate or shy because you might mispronounce a sound or a word. It's okay. But having more native-like pronunciation can help with your confidence. It can make you feel more like you fit in with other fluent or native English speakers. So, of course, if it makes you feel better, definitely keep working on your pronunciation and your accent reduction. You should, however, in my opinion, be very proud of where you're from and wear your accent with pride. Some people think that it's really cool and sexy to have an accent. So if it's not hurting your communication with other English speakers, then why completely get rid of it? Or maybe you can have it both ways, where sometimes you speak with a kind of perfect native accent, but other times you choose to leave your accents on a little bit for fun. It's nice when you have options, right? So here I've told you the truth before getting into the five most difficult sounds in English, which I'm about to share with you. I wanted to preface that or to first say that you don't need to master these sounds to start speaking English. In fact, the more important point to learn that is rarely taught or spoken about in English class is stress. Not the kind of stress you feel when you're going to have a test in English class, but the stress where we put kind of an accent on words in English, or we make part of a sentence louder or give it more weight. This is stress. And again, because of time, I'm not going to teach about stress in this lesson, but if you would like to know more about it, I'm going to make a lesson about it next week. So make sure that you are subscribed here to Go Natural English so you don't miss it. And if it is already published, I will link to it as soon as I publish it in the description and up there. So what are the five most difficult sounds to pronounce in English and how can we practice them? Well, let me tell you. Number one, starting with what I consider the easiest of the hardest sounds is the TH sound. And I know it's difficult, so we're starting from a challenging place to begin with. But number one is TH pronounced in two different ways. Th as in father and th as in theater. Let's practice those words again. Father, father and theater, theater. 
I'm going to move quickly here, so make sure that you practice along with me to practice these sounds and also watch the way that my mouth moves. Now, it's very important for your pronunciation to understand how to use your mouth. I'm going to talk more about that in just a moment, but let's talk about these five most difficult sounds to pronounce first. Number two, the er sound, which is represented in spelling most of the time as er, but not always. For example, the word nurse, it's spelled N-U-R-S-E, but we pronounce it nurse, the same as the E-R sound on the end of the word father. Nurse, nurse, father, father. This is an E-R sound, er, which is also called in many cases an R-colored vowel because we have vowels like U that actually sound like an E-R. The next difficult sound to pronounce is a very interesting one. I love this sound. It is called the schwa sound. Now, that's not how you say it, but that's actually the name of the sound. And it has a very important role in English pronunciation. The schwa sound sounds like when you get punched in the stomach and you go, uh. Or if you forget something or have a small problem and you say, uh-oh. <laughs> so it's this uh sound. This is the unstressed sound in many English words. And so it can be spelled in many different ways with many different vowels. For example, the word amazing. Amazing. It's not amazing. It's amazing. 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 So many words that have more than one syllable in English have a stressed syllable, and then either before or after the stressed syllable, you will hear the schwa uh sound. Amazing. Let's try another word, entrepreneur. Did you hear the schwa sound? It comes after the first stressed syllable. Entrepreneur. Entre so that uh is the schwa sound coming out again, but with a different vowel. The first word, amazing, is spelled with an A, and the second word, the schwa sound, is spelled with an E, entrepreneur. Number four is a sound that actually, it's a name of a sound that could be many, many different sounds, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit here. Consonant clusters. So a consonant is any letter that is not a vowel. A cluster is a group of them. So for example, the word cluster has a consonant cluster with the k, l sound. Cluster. Another word, friend, has two consonants together or a group, a cluster. F, rend. The F and the R make a cluster. Another word with a consonant cluster is stretch. We have s, t, r, the s, t, and r sounds. So we have three consonants that are clustered together. And then the tch sound at the end of the word is actually one sound. It's not a consonant cluster, just FYI. So consonant clusters can be really difficult because we have so many consonants together. And in English, we don't need to add vowels between them. Next, number five, it's also, okay, I'm kind of cheating on this one a little bit because it's also five different sounds for number five, which are long and short vowels. Actually, 10 different sounds, five different vowels. I'm sorry, guys. I am cheating here, giving you a lot of difficult sounds. It's a, a 10 for one here. So long and short vowels, for example, apple and ape or like and lick, or umbrella, and usually rob or robe. And the word election can have a long and a short vowel or a short and a short vowel, depending on how you pronounce it. People pronounce this word election or election. It just depends what region you are from, but both are correct. So how do you improve your pronunciation if that is what you would like to do? Well, it is not by simply repeating these sounds over and over. This 
it can help if you're doing it the correct way, but if you are repeating incorrect sounds over and over, it will simply make it worse. So what you need to do is first understand the sounds and that the sounds are not necessarily letters. They're not necessarily the same. And second, you need to understand how your mouth works, how to position your tongue, your lips, and your airflow and your voice. These are all important mechanics for making a sound. Your voice is a musical instrument and it's quite complex, but there's no reason why you can't learn to use it. Hey naturals, what's up? It's your American English teacher Gabby here to help you with your English fluency and especially today in this lesson with your pronunciation. Have you ever wondered why English just sounds like it's full of er sounds? Er, er, er. Well, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about the R sound and how it can be a problem, but also how you can solve that to improve your fluency to sound more like a native speaker of English. So if that sounds interesting, then let's jump right into it. So this lesson is brought to us from inside the English Fluency Formula ebook that I wrote for you to help you to become fluent in English in 15 minutes a day. So it's gonna help you to learn faster and better, focusing on what you really wanna learn, which is speaking and listening for fluent conversational skills, right? Okay, so let's look at the chapter on pronunciation. And there's a section in here on the R sound. So you probably know that the R sound in English is different from other languages. I learned in Portuguese, the R can make an H sound, like huh or in Japanese, it can almost make an L sound, like le. Or in Spanish, it can kind of sound like a D or like a R, like a rolled R. So English is different. It's R or R. So why do we hear this R sound all the time? It's because in English, we have what's called an R colored vowel. That means a vowel followed by an R. And in a lot of words in English, no matter what the vowel is, that sound becomes er. You form the sound by rounding your lips and your tongue is not touching anything. It's just in the middle of your mouth. So again, watch and repeat, er. Very good. I will never forget the time one of my English students mispronounced the er sound and it made a huge misunderstanding. He said, teacher, I'm hot. And I was thinking, okay, so you're hot, get over it, we're all hot. But actually what he was trying to say is I'm hurt. He had hurt himself, but he couldn't pronounce the er sound. So I was thinking he was hot, you know, like he needed to cool down or maybe that he was complimenting himself because you know to say someone is hot means they're attractive. But he was actually saying that he was hurt. And when I finally figured this out and was able to help him, I was so embarrassed because I didn't understand right away. So this could be a matter of life or death if you know how to say the er sound. Words like hurt and hot can be confused easily if you can't produce this sound. Here's some more examples of when you need to use the R colored vowel. How about another example with you? We have hurt and nurse. So it's not a typical U sound, right? It's er, not uh. It's nurse. How about an example with I? The word first uses the er sound. Also the word bird uses the er sound. The O in word is another R colored vowel. Word, not ward, but word. We also have world and worry. It's not world and it's not worry, it's world and worry. It's really interesting because in different regions of the United States, people use the R colored vowel more than in others. For example, in the South, you might hear people saying instead of hair, they might say her. So it's really confusing if you're trying to say her hair, her, her, look at her, her. 
I'm not from the South, so I apologize for my horrible Southern accent, but I'm just telling you this because I think it's really interesting how accents can change depending on different regions. But here at Go Natural English, I'm teaching you a standard American English, and we would say her hair. So hair is not typically using an R colored vowel. And of course, not every vowel that's followed by an R is R colored. So just to make this more complicated, there are exceptions. For example, the word north. It's not nerth, it's north. However, as I mentioned, in different regional accents, you may hear people saying nerth. It sounds strange to me, but you may hear it. It's not completely impossible. Another example would be the word starts. I would say start. Other people may say start. Let's start the lesson. But that is not really standard American English. I just want you to know you might hear it, but for your pronunciation, I would recommend that you say start. To see more examples of our colored vowels, come read the full blog post lesson at gonaturalenglish.com. And to learn more with me, download the English Fluency Formula eBook. You can click right up there to buy it and access it online immediately. So if you're ready to get fluent, then let's get started. I'll see you there. Hey naturals, what's up? It's your favorite American English teacher, Gabby, here to help you with the most commonly mispronounced words by English language learners, part two. That's right, if you didn't see it yet, check out part one. In part one, I really concentrate on helping you with those R colored vowels, the er sound, like words like word or world or work, for example. But in part two, we're gonna take a little different focus because there's a lot of words that are very easy to mispronounce in English, right? I know. So if you're curious about what those words are and if you wanna practice with me, then keep watching. Also, for learning English fluently, you need to take a big picture look. So I recommend, if you haven't gotten it yet, to check out my ebook, The English Fluency Formula. I took all of my best tips and lessons from the last several years and put them inside for easy reading. You can instantly download this ebook when you click there or go to gonaturalenglish.com slash ebook. Now let's begin with the top 13 most mispronounced words in English part two. I'm going to say each word twice and you can practice it with me to develop your amazing American English accent. Are you ready? Let's go. I read your comments in part one and I saw that you had a few more words with the er sound, that R colored vowel that you wanted to practice with me. So number one is worm. Not warm or warm, but worm. Worm. Number two, warm. Not warm, but warm. My jaw really drops when I say that vowel sound, warm. Number three, called. Not called, but called. Called. Now we're getting into words where English language learners often want to add extra sounds. So listen carefully how to pronounce these words without adding anything extra, even though you might see it in the spelling. And when you look at the word, you want to say that sound that you see, but don't say it. Just pretend it's not there, just like someone you don't want to see. It's not there, don't say it. Don't see it, don't say it. Number four is cause. Not cause, but cause. Cause. Five is similar, but different. Chaos, not chaos, but chaos, chaos. So we actually do say each vowel sound separately in this word, unlike many other English words. Number six, jewelry, not jewelry, but jewelry, jewelry. So we cut out an extra syllable there. Number seven, architecture. Not architecture, but architecture. 
architecture. Architecture. So notice how the C and T sounds blend together in this word. If this is your profession, you're an architect. Architect. Eight, photograph. Not photograph, but photograph. Photograph. There's a couple of things going on here that I want to bring to your attention. First of all, in American English, we make a T into a D when it is between two vowels, such as the O-T-O -O in photo. So notice I don't say photo, I say photo, photograph. And the second interesting point for this word is the stress. We stress the first syllable. Do you hear it? Photograph, photograph. That's a little bit too much, right? But I'm just trying to show you. Photograph, photograph, not photograph. Uh, maybe in your native language, you say something with a different syllable. I know in Spanish, it would be fotografo. Number nine, vegetable. Not vegetable, but vegetable. Vegetable. So that first syllable is so strong, it makes the second syllable disappear. A similar thing happens in number 10, comfortable. Not comfortable, but comfortable. Comfortable. The stress syllable is so strong that the one after it pretty much disappears. Comfortable. Number 11, one of my favorite words, chocolate. So again, so much stress on the first syllable that the next syllable kind of disappears. So it's not chocolate, it's chocolate. Chocolate. 12, Tuesday. Not Tuesday, but Tuesday. And 13, another day of the week, Wednesday. Not Wednesday as it's spelled, but Wednesday. So that syllable after the first one, also known as the second syllable, disappears because the first syllable is so strong. So remember this grouping of most mispronounced words because there are syllables that completely disappear and we have to pay really close attention to the stressed syllable. So remember to go back and watch part one so you can see more examples with the er sounds. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe here to Go Natural English, leave a comment, like it, share this video with your friends, and happy English language learning to you. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah. Bye for now.